As of today, it's been a little over a year since my first couple of Fallout 4 challenges, which is crazy to think as it feels like I only recorded them a few weeks ago. One of the first videos I ever recorded was beating Fallout 4 with only gun bashing, but a lot of you pointed out in the comments of that video that I could have used the shredder functions of the minigun as it also scales with the basher perk. Truthfully, I completely forgot the shredder was even a thing, so I figured today I'll give it as much needed time in the spotlight as I am to find out, can you beat Fallout 4 with only the shredder? A short update before the run begins, outside of videos I'm quite busy for the following month. Videos should still be out on a weekly basis, but some of them may just be a bit shorter than usual. Now with all that out of the way, let's begin. When deciding what I believe would be a good build for this run, I came to the conclusion that focusing on strength and intelligence would be vital. First off, strength of 8 so I can actually make some use of the basher perk for the extra damage on the shredder. It's a lot of points for one perk, but I have a feeling it'll be worth the investment. Intelligence I raised to 9 just for the added experience gains. I usually go with the idiot savant, but I thought I would just switch it up a bit. Finally, my last 6 points were just spread evenly between endurance and agility. Endurance for some health and defense, obviously, and then agility because I will need the second rank in the gun nut perk if I even want to have the ability to construct the shredder mod. Escaping the vault and first things first, I head back home and use the I'm special book to max out my intelligence just for the extra crumb of XP that I will receive. So, of course, to get things started I'll require a minigun, and as we all know, there's one very close by just sitting there in Concord waiting to be taken. Rushing in head first wouldn't be the wisest idea as I can't progress through the museum the normal way to get to the roof as Preston won't open the final door until the raiders are dealt with. All hope is not lost however as this is still a Bethesda game, so in other words, there's always more than one way to reach your destination, intended or otherwise. By circling around Concord to the south I can avoid the raiders occupying the main street and slip into the church unnoticed. Climbing up the stairs in the back I can reach the roof and from there I can get a running start where I am fortunate enough to jump and land on the back of the vertebrate and can then safely make my way down to the minigun and rip it straight off, because I'm just that hench. I also grab the power armor for good measure too before fast travelling back to Sanctuary. It's just an oversized paperweight in the meantime as I don't have a fusion core but it's still nice to have around. Now here comes the part that I've been holding off on for a bit. As I mentioned I will need the second rank in the gun nut perk if I want to craft the shredder mod. Thing is, in order to get the second rank I will need to be level 13. Currently, I am level 1, and without the ability to attack and kill enemies, that limits my options significantly. Most quests aren't an option either, because a majority of situations can only be solved by combat in Fallout 4, so the way I see it, I am left with two options. I can either run around the map like a headless chicken, marking any and all locations I find for XP, and maybe do the odd fetch quest here and there, or I can scrap every single object in Sanctuary and begin building objects until I get enough. While the first option could honestly be a lot more interesting, it would definitely take a lot longer, so to that end, everything in Sanctuary got melted down to its base materials and shoved into my pockets where they were turned into posts, fences, prefabs and stairs. This took a little over 30 minutes to do as I had to also repeatedly scrap everything that I built and then craft them again, just to reach the XP threshold. I may also have speed ran my way to Carpal Tunnel Syndrome faster than Luigi's Mansion video, but that's neither here nor there. If you are curious, the rest of the perks I chose were either levels in Basher, or defense based as they would by far be the most useful going forward. I then crafted my mod, gave my weapon a unique name, and could now finally test it out. I also found out that in first person the weapon spins and makes the worrying sound that you would expect, but if you use it in the third person, the sole survivor constantly grunts in pain. With access to a proper weapon, where else to go than conquer to test it out in some of the locals. While I may be level 13, the raiders here still seem to be around level 1 as their attacks barely even register with me. On the flip side I am just decimating my way through the raiders as the shredder tears through them so fast that their health bar doesn't really even get a chance to show itself depleting before they drop dead. It goes without saying that I definitely underestimated the strength of this upgrade. Honestly, kinda disappointed in myself that after 6.5 years since the game's release, I am only getting around to using it now for the very first time. Anyway, I have the usual conversation with Preston before heading out the front door to deal with the raiders. The reinforcements are better equipped, but all things considered, they don't really slow me down. If there was a real fight to be had here, it was of course the Deathclaw. I was perhaps a little overzealous here as I sprinted straight for it to deal with it first. This was possibly the biggest mistake I could have made as something I haven't mentioned yet is that when spinning the shredder you are constantly using AP, and if your AP runs out, you can't use the spinner. Therefore, me sprinting beforehand meant I couldn't finish the Deathclaw off in one go, and as such he got me while I was waiting for my action points to refill. Next attempt, I of course just decided not to sprint, but to be extra safe I also used some Psycho Jet that I crafted with the drugs around Sanctuary just to really seal the deal. 
Naturally, it did not survive the encounter, and then I just went around and mopped up the last of the raiders. I then grabbed my reward from Preston, and to save myself the mental anguish of settlement quests, I never interacted with him again for the rest of the game. Next stop was Diamond City, I suppose, as I didn't need to grind for levels, and thanks to the raider reinforcements, I was able to procure myself a full set of metal armour. The journey there was filled with bloodshed and carnage, some of which that I will go over now. Wolfgang made the mistake of standing in my line of sight, so naturally him and Simone were not long for this world. I also paid the raiders at the Corvega assembly clan to visit, for once not because I was told to, but because I wanted to. The violence continued as I minced them all into little tiny bite sized pieces. I would have loved to have picked up the bloody mess perk to see the true mess this weapon can make. Sadly though, I've learned from previous videos that YouTube really doesn't like it when I make human ball nays out of people. Disappointing as that may be, I hope I can make it up to all of you by turning this raider into a makeshift meat rocket. Once my business at the plant was finished, I continued on my way and came upon the distress signal for the Brotherhood of Steel. I didn't feel like signing with the Brotherhood again. That said, I did like the idea of testing out the Shredder at Fort Strong, so for the time being, I suppose, I will play along with their requests. The defence and aid of the police station was a sight to behold as hordes of feral ghouls all willingly dove head first into my portable wood chipper. Dance was grateful for the assistance, and now the two of us skipped on the Arcjet. The synths inside are dismantled just as easily as anything else I have fought up until this point. They do, however, get some brownie points as they were able to stun me more often than most with that weird spinning arm attack. It was also around this point where I decided that if I was going to continue obliterating everything that stood in my way, then I should at the very least go for the most difficult ending. In my opinion, that ending would be the Institute, because the final assault on the airport can get pretty crazy with how much the Brotherhood throw at you, plus out of all these Fallout 4 runs, I have only sided with them once. You could also make the argument that the Railroad is the hardest faction, and that I've only ever helped them out once before as well. And while that's all well and good, we all know I'm saving another Railroad run for a very specific and highly requested video. Anyway, back to the here and now, and I don't mean the crappy perk, me and Dance finish up playing Trash Compactor, I hand over the deep range transmitter, and after agreeing to help his cause, I begin to wander aimlessly south once more. Okay, so considering I was dead set on helping the Institute by this point, there was no real reason to keep the railroad alive. Like, at all. So I moseyed on over to the Old North Church, and now- I think it's time for Jack to let her rip. With the blood, sweat and tears of the railroad stuck in between the spiky parts of my weapon, I grabbed all the useful supplies I could and was now off to Park Street Station. While I was there, I made sure to stop off and deal with Swan, simply because I believe he's a good measure of how strong your build is this early in the game. Unlike the Deathclaw, I decided to do this without the performance enhancers, and it certainly ended up in a closer fight. For one, time wasn't slowed to a crawl so he could actually hit me back, and therefore knock me out of my animation and cause me to have to charge up the Shredder. Unfortunately for him, I was able to survive just long enough to squeeze out the victory after I turned his ankles into mush. Down into the station and for once the Triggerman put up a little bit of a fight as I actually need to use some healing supplies to keep going. It's more so the sheer number of them in the more open area outside the vault that caused trouble. Being shot at from multiple angles is the bane of any melee build's existence though I suppose. Inside the vault and things began to look up again for me as they have nowhere to run in the enclosed hallways. Reaching and saving Nick is easy enough, and to really get on his good side I even tried helping him by digging a hole through one of the doors. Sadly it doesn't work, but on the bright side it is time to face Skinny Malone. In a shocking turn of events, Skinny, Darla and their guards end up wiping the floor with me in less than 10 seconds. Twice. Not gonna lie, this really threw me for a loop as it took way longer than it should have for me to figure out what the problem was here. The issue was that I kept going for Skinny first, as naturally he should be the one you focus. However, the real play was to go after Darla first, because if she was still in the fight, she could repeatedly stun me with her bat, which, combined with being stuck in the crossfire, led to a very early grave. Sure enough, my first attempt at this new strategy, and the fight is once again over in less than 10 seconds, but not for me. Once we're back out in the not-so-fresh air, I sent Inspector Gadget back to Diamond City ahead of me, because I had some unfinished business in the area. As I have said before, there ain't no kill like overkill, so if the Shredder is going to continue to be as powerful as it has been, then I figured it would be fun to try and squeeze as much damage out of it as I possibly can. What this means is that I quickly make myself a ghoul smoothie out of the locals inside Hubris Comics, while I make my way to the top and procure the Grognak outfit for its added strength and melee damage benefits. Truth be told, I have no idea if these buffs affect the Shredder, but either way, we cannot deny the fashion that is on show right now. With my new rubbery gloves, I slide one of them into McDonough's pockets at the front gate and get to work playing detective with Nick. I of course raid Kellogg's house of all his valuables, and then one cigar later, it's off to find Kellogg. 
Thanks to helping out with Arcjet earlier, I can just fast travel straight there and head south to quickly make it to Fort Hagen. However, before that, I stop off at the Federal Ration Stockpile, not only to kill some raiders, but I also figured that seeing how I'm a higher level than usual, that there should be a fairly decent set of power armor nearby. I was correct in my assumptions, it seems, as I found an almost complete set of T-51 power armor. While I came to get the armor for defensive reasons, I ended up discovering something a little more fascinating after getting inside. As it turns out, when you use the Shredder while in power armor, it doesn't use any action points. Meaning, I never have to stop spinning from here on out. Now that I was channeling the full power of the cleaners from Labyrinth, I was able to just slaughter my way through all of the synths at Fort Hagen, and they weren't even able to stun me this time. I will say you have to admire Kellogg's determination for a little diplomacy here, as even with the spinning death machine pointed straight at him, he continues to talk. Not that it did him much good unfortunately, as this was by far the fastest Kellogg fight that I've had in a long time. After grabbing bits of his brain I make it outside, and briefly head back to Sanctuary to upgrade my armour. If I'm heading for an institute ending then it makes sense to get as much energy resistance as possible, so not only did I get the winterized paint job, but from this point on I began putting my perk points into perception so that I could get the refractor perk. Next up was the memory dance segment, which was just as uneventful as ever. Apologies if it sounds like I'm speeding through this by the way, but given the strength of the weapon and armour combo, I never even need to go shopping for things like armour and ammo. Plus, thanks to my increased level right off the bat, most enemies drop stim packs, so I didn't even need to worry about healing supplies. Really from here, I just spent caps on fusion cores. Heading south to Fallout 3 filter land and I made another startling discovery, although this one is not as beneficial. Turns out the natural counter to this build is Mirelurks. Like, just any kind of basic Mirelurk, as the Shredder just bounces straight off their shells like any other melee weapon. I tried to fight a few, but after a bit it became pretty apparent that I was getting literally nowhere, so I just decided to hoof it towards the glowing sea. All I can say about that is I am now even more thankful that I didn't choose to side with the Minuteman, as I would have been doomed when fighting the Mirelurk Queen. The creatures in the glowing sea are thankfully a lot squishier than their crustacean friends, so I get to rip up stingwings and rat scorpions to my heart's content. At one stage I even became a ghoul meat grinder again as a large horde of them jumped right into me. You know, you would think they would have learnt their lesson by now, but that doesn't seem to be the case. On the topic of simple slaughters, I used my power armor's high radiation resistance to bully the children of Adam into an early grave as their gamma guns refused to harm me. So in other words, I made them endure the struggle of a gamma gun only run. I have a tussle with the death claw outside of Virgil's cave, really it only lasted as long as it did because he decided to pick me up and throw me. If he hadn't, this would have been even faster than the first one. Well, we know where this is going, Big Green needs me to find the courser so I can decode the chip and get into the institute. Luckily I marked green tech on the map prior to this, so one fast travel later and I can get started. You know when you're speeding through the game with these challenge runs, this part with the courser and the gunners can usually be quite difficult, so I'm kind of worried about how this is gonna- <laughs> uh, Anyway I take the chip back to get it decoded and now it's time to build the teleporter. Except not just yet, as I need to deal with the situation at Fort Strong for the Brotherhood real quick. Even with all the power I have at my fingertips, I still made sure to tackle the fight with the Behemoth and the Minions carefully, because if Darla and Skinny Malone can manage to kill me, then anything's possible. I start by being smart as I thin out the ranks to make things a bit more manageable when it's time to fight the Behemoth. Despite my level, the mutants outside are all just your run-of-the-mill basic soup mutants, with no brutes or masters. I'm not sure why that is, but it definitely makes dealing with them go by a lot faster. The Behemoth, as you can imagine, hits the hardest out of the bunch. And, from what I could tell, he was actually a lot stronger than even Swan. A few hits from him was all it took to destroy most of my armour and cause me to back off. On the bright side, while he may hit like a freight train, he doesn't appear to have as much HP as Swan, so with some careful manoeuvring and a few stim packs, I can get behind him and finish the job. The mutants inside were nothing to write home about, so now it was on to building the teleporter. I then lied to Maxon's face about recruiting Dr. Lee, and unbeknownst to the Brotherhood, they just sealed their fate by helping me get inside the Institute. I quickly mash my way through Father's dialogue and get to meeting the rest of the leaders, before being assigned my first task, which is to recapture the Raider synth at Libertalia. This quest is usually one of the shortest in the main story, as I usually just swim across the water, climb up the big structure, and then immediately skip right to the Raider fight. With my power armor though, I would just sink like a rock, and seeing how I didn't want to recreate the horrible underwater segment from the original KOTOR, I opted to just take the intended path along the makeshift ramps and bridges while fighting all of his lackeys. Even though I was moving pretty slow, the raider with the fat man never managed to hit me, so things went pretty smooth all the way to the top. I then used the recall code on the synth, and while they were distracted, diced up his two buddies. One quest down, a few more to go, and it was now time for the Battle of Bunker Hill. While it is a simple mission and realistically nothing too taxing, it served as a good way for me to see how I would fare against Brotherhood Knights going forward, especially for missions like Mass Fusion and the attack on the Prudwin. 
It's also pretty handy to test it here, as no matter what I do, the Brotherhood will not attack me, as they still think I'm on their side, despite the fact I am clearly working with a Courser. Turns out I didn't need to be worried about the Shredder's capabilities. In fact, it not only kills knights easy enough, but it also seems to absolutely shred ha, their power armor and destroys it within seconds. Feeling good, I recall the synths and then spend a little longer messing around with the Brotherhood before getting back to Father and discussing the situation. The game then glitched out briefly as Father would not begin the meeting, no matter what I did, so I had to load back. Thankfully, this fixed the situation and I didn't need to load back to side with another faction, because I probably would have lost my mind. It was time now for mass fusion, and therefore, my first real fight against the Brotherhood. It goes pretty damn well if I'm being honest. There aren't a lot of knights at the top of the building, so mostly just normal Brotherhood soldiers with no power armor and weak laser weapons, or in other words, very easy cannon fodder. To switch things up a little here, rather than take the slow elevator ride down to the bottom where I'd be completely defenseless, I put my power armor to good use, and walked off the side of the building, landed at the front door, and from there could just casually walk down into the basement and claim our prize. The sentry bot was able to stun me, but for whatever reason, he only melleed me once, so I could take him out no problem. For the first time in the run, I actually had to rely on someone else here, as the doors won't open until the turrets on the ceiling are destroyed, so I had to wait around for Ali to take them out. When she finally does, I go to meet the two Assaultrons head on, and prove who has a superior spinning blitz. Shocker, it was me. With the quest complete, it was time for some of the more basic Institute quests, such as recruiting Wallace to help with the reactor, and messing around with the radio in Diamond City. Not a lot to go over with these two, so to make my own fun, I went on a brief killing spree in Diamond City, as I'm known to do. Father, fearing for his own safety and trying to mess with me, trapped himself inside the cell that his robot clone usually sits in, but fortunately I could still talk to him and proceed to the final part of the quest line. As I have already dealt with the railroad, all that's left to do is meet with my council members and discuss the best course of action for dealing with the Brotherhood, which is of course all-out combat. I wish there was more to say about this final battle. Like, I wish I could tell you that I struggled against the sheer number of knights and Brotherhood soldiers, but that would just be a really big lie. As mentioned before, the Shredder not only rips through the Brotherhood, but also destroys their armour in the process, so it drains their health at an alarming rate. I also didn't need to worry about my own armour, because when it did get damaged, I would just replace it with the appropriate pieces from the many, MANY bodies littering the airport. Not to mention, after destroying the generators, things just got even easier, as I now had a small army of sense to distract the Brotherhood as well. Things went so well here that I managed to take out every single member of the Brotherhood way before the virus was ever uploaded. Maxim was the last to go out, and once he went down, I just stood around until the game teleported me out. I then watched the fireworks, returned to Father, watched him die, finishing the game, and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout 4 with only the Shredder. Okay, yeah, that was easy. It was very easy, in fact. It was fun to just decimate my way through the game, don't get me wrong. Although nevertheless, I hope it was still enjoyable for all of you, and here's hoping next week's video may be a bit more of a challenge. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, continue to like, and if you like, and some more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe to try one of these videos out every week. My name's Nervous, thanks everyone, I'll see y'all in the next video.